Hey parents, Miss Beth Matlock here, um, dyslexia therapist. I wanted to go over with you just a few things that um, tips that I thought would help you guys at home as you're practicing some learned words. So first of all, most of our words in our English language are sounded out phonetically, right? Those are the ones that we like. My students like those because we learn how to decode them. So I'm going to go real quick on what we do. Um, it might be information overload, but your kiddos know this. If they've been with me very long at all, then they know what I'm talking about. And this just might be a tip for you if you're reading with your child at home or if they're reading to you and they come stuck on a word, which we know happens often, then they can use this strategy to attack that word. Okay, so using this, they can um, be successful in reading the words that do follow the phonetic rules. So the first thing we do is a vowel and a closed syllable. So that means that there's a consonant after it. We code it with a brief, okay? So if you say, hey, this is a vowel and a closed syllable, what does that mean? They know that it's gonna be short and you're gonna code it with a brief. And then we learn also little tricks I wanted to throw in. If there's twin consonants, we don't need to say both of those. We can just read it as miss. And again, if they're really struggling to put together those sounds, it is okay to always say the sounds individually, like m, i, s, n, i, s. Okay, we use highlighters. Um, you can use whatever, even just their pencil, to dot it and then blend it together. Okay, again, simple words like at, pat. But it does go into even our larger words, okay? What I ask them to do is find the vowels. In this word, it follows the vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. My, my kiddos know that almost all the time in that pattern, you split down the middle of the consonants. And then look what we have. We have two closed syllables. And they can read nap, and they can read kin. Then they can read the word napkin. So that's an example of a vowel and a closed syllable. After we've mastered that, we move on to a vowel and an open syllable. These are simple words like me. There's nothing after the vowel, so it makes its long sound e, go, and then again in a longer word, we have our two vowels. In this case, there's only one constant in the middle. We're going to divide before. I'm not going to get into all the rules of when we divide before and after but they can try it both ways, okay? We know that if I did it after, I would have laughter, laughter, and laughter is not a word. So I move it, and then that makes this an open syllable, lay, ter, later. And that is open because the syllable by itself, there's not a consonant after the A. So that's why it's open, later. So there's our vowel in an open syllable. And the last one that we do is a vowel consonant E pattern. When they were in the younger grades, they might have heard it called the sneaky E or something like that, but it's vowel consonant E. So example, we have vowel consonant E, the vowel is long, the E is silent. So a word like five, follows that pattern. <clears throat> Nose. And even a multi-syllable word like online. Online. You have to know that word on. And then line follows the vowel consonant. So those are our three ways that we code our phonetically correct words. Now the question is what do we do when it does not follow that those rules? Um, there's so much or there are so many words that don't. And the reason is, is because our language comes from gra excuse me, Latin and Greek. And over time, the spelling or even the way the word is pronounced changes. And that's where we get these learned words. So we can go back and trace why it came from that word, okay? Or why it sounds like this now. And the kids get a kick out of that sometimes when we look at that. But the main thing we want them to be able to do is read the word. So for example, some of these that you'll see do make the sounds that they should, like four. 
or his, because we learn that S does make a Z sound after following a voiced vowel. C. Those can be sounded out. But then we have words like this. If we followed the rule, we would read that with a vowel constant E pattern, and we might think it's have. But of course, we know this word is have. So what do we do? We have to learn this word. We have to call it a red, we call it red words. We have to practice it over and over and over again until we learn that word. It simply does not follow the rule. Another example is this word, was. You've probably um, heard kiddos call it was, and it's not correct. Another one that does not follow the rule that gives lots of trouble is who. So how, what are some ways that you can practice this at home? Of course, one way you can do is just going through the words with them, and if they don't know them, tell it, and then practice again. Put the ones that they missed to the side, and practice those again at the end, five or 10 minutes each night. Another way I like to practice it with kids is I take um, paper, a bumpy sheet, we call it bumpy sheets, and we can put, you could do it two ways. You could put the actual word over and trace it with a crayon and it makes a bumpy. And then when you take it off, you can take your finger and trace it and they can feel that tactile um, feeling that the crayon made over that bumpy piece of um, plastic. So they could do that. They could um, write the word, my kids like sand. If you have a um, just a baking cookie sheet or something like that, if you have sand, great. Or if you want to use like powdered sugar, um, even salt, something like that, that they could just write the word. What I have my kiddos do, like if they're writing the word C, then they would write S E E, and then swipe and say the word C. Okay. So whatever you're doing, if you're writing it in sand, you're writing it in powdered sugar, if you're making it with Play-Doh and then, and then tracing it or saying the letters, that's great. One other thing, if um, they like to move, they like to get up and do the word, if you were doing the word does, does is a hard word for them, they might do something like this. Since D goes to the top, they would say D-O-E-S does. Okay, we do that a lot. Um, and then just writing it. If you have a table that they can write on that erases, we like to write on our tables and then clean them off um, at the end. Um, anything you need, uh, I'm gonna send a piece of this bumpy paper. I'm gonna send a dry erase marker. Um, but anything else that you need that you could use to practice those words, I'm gonna send those words with them. Um, let me know and I'll be glad to help you. Any questions you have for me in ways that you can practice, just shoot me a message anytime. Thanks.